Now, today's show is a bit of a mismatch. We've got some pre-recorded content coming up with Sendias and an interview with Abs and Robin from Young Listeners. However, today does have a central theme, making decisions, something I'm sure we've all struggled with, especially with big life choices about next steps around the bend for a lot of young people right now. As well as this, this month a great opportunity is running for 11 to 18 year olds to literally make your mark with Youth Parliament. Now, if you've struggled with decision making or have any advice, text GFM and your message to 60066. Welcome back. Now, first off today, I wanted to talk a bit more about Sendias. Now, Sendias aims to give young people with additional needs a brighter future. And one of the ways that they aim to do this is offering advice, often around decision making to do with preparation for adulthood. And one of the main positives of Sendias is that the service is free and any support and advice that they give is impartial and confidential. Now, Martha met with Isabel Rutt earlier in the week to discuss this a bit further. Uh, So big thank you to Martha and Isabel for talking with us. So let's see what was said. I'm talking to Isabel Rutt from Sendias. So Isabel, firstly, could you explain to me what Sendias stands for and what the service is and what it provides for young people? Thank you for inviting me. Yes, um, So SENDIAS is Special Educational Needs and Disability, and the IAS bit on the end is Information, Advice and Support Service. So we offer a free, independent advice and support for any young person or family or carer with um, a young person with um, special educational needs or disability for the Gloucestershire area. And in fact, we have um, SENDIAS, are it's a legal requirement that you do have a SENDIAS service in every local authority in England. So I gather that anyone up to the age of 25 who has an additional uh, need or disability can contact SENDIAS for advice. Would you be able to outline the major areas of help that someone between about 16 and 25 might want to look into? Yes, I'm the post-16 advisor for SENDIAS for Gloucestershire, young people from 16 upwards who get in touch, we have an area of their um, special educational needs, which we focus on, and we call that preparation for adulthood. So the term preparation for adulthood is really important because it's part of the SEND code of practice, the legal bit, the guidance bit that we need to follow. So um, young people come and um, seek support for that preparation for adulthood. That's their next steps. And preparation for adulthood um, can be divided into four sections. So we have an employment section or next step. Sometimes that may be training or education or employment. Um, Another area is independent living. That's really important when you're thinking about your next steps of um, not being reliant on your family perhaps becoming more independent. And if you are reliant on your family for your needs or your care, how you can take more control over that, make more um, sound, you know, judgments and make your own decisions. Another area is the community, being part of that community. We call that community inclusion. So it may be from joining a club or an activity or even knowing who your doctor, your dentist, having that um, ability to join in and become a valued member of your community. That's really important when you're um, taking your next steps into becoming an adult. And uh, the fourth area is health. And within that health, we have your own physical um, health, or we also now have um, the mental health aspects. So again, becoming independent on taking responsibility for your own health and your own mental health. And that may be through, again, becoming involved in knowing um, when you need your COVID jabs on, knowing when you need um, support perhaps with your mental health or uh, ways in which you can support yourself through healthy eating or a healthy lifestyle through sport. So those are the four areas of preparation for adulthood. And when a young person or a family or a 
a family member of the young person with SEND contacts us, it tends to be one of those four areas that they need to seek support with. And usually there's such a crossover, it can be two or three of those areas. I wondered if, um, thinking of the young people you support, you'd be able to describe a particular case study of how working with Sendias has empowered that young person to reach and actually exceed their goals and ambitions? Yes, certainly. Yes. I I mean, I was thinking about um, different all the young people that we've supported. And um, some sometimes it's a, a very tiny um, five minute conversation that you can have. And that really impacts on how they view themselves within that whole journey of reaching their potential. But there was um, one, I'll, I'll give you one example of uh, a, a uh, a young person, so he's 15, and he was in year 10. I wasn't involved in his case. He um, was an autistic young man with um, an EHCP in place, and they had an annual review. And when you have an annual review when you're in year 10, it's called a transfer review. So it's getting ready for your next step. A little bit when you're in year 5, you have a transfer review to see where you're going to go at secondary age. Mm-hmm. So this was in year 10 where what would the next steps be for this young man? And the Senko had very kindly um, invited somebody from the local college and the uh, the school and the young person had voiced that they were interested in animals and animal care. Um, But the young person was an elected mute. So when confronted with lots of adults in a room, really didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And so parents contacted me after the meeting and said, the transfer review we felt went really well. And he signed up to do a fairly academic course at college. But actually, we don't know whether this is the right thing um, or or we're, we're not feeling that this probably is the right path. But we don't know where to go. So over a period of months, I did some home visits and I worked with the young person. And by the time then we had the next review, I was able to advocate for him. He had a long list of how he had spoken to me and had really made it clear what he wanted. And yes, he did want to work with animals, but he actually wanted to do more of a hands-on, have more of a hands-on experience and get uh, work experience. So that was an ideal opportunity then to introduce them to our forwards team, which is part of um, uh, the county support for uh, supported internships. Um, And that was where he could go to college for one day a week, securing and reinforcing his maths and English, learning how to write a CV and meeting other people um, of of his age. Three days a week, he then ended up working, doing a supported internship, working in a very large pet shop and um, getting that experience. And at the end of that experience, he was able to advocate for himself. He was able to then voice really what he wanted. And he felt that he was part of his own decision-making rather than being done to by very well-meaning adults within the room. So that's the sort of work that we can do and the sort of work how we at Sendias can support young people. If somebody was listening who was a parent or a carer, what advice you might have for them, for parent or carers who are supporting a young person to make decisions about their future? Do you know, Martha, I find that parents and carers, they know their child or they know the young person really, really well. They have that very inner gut feeling of what feels right for them and what things, when they feel that things aren't going right. Sometimes they don't feel like they're being heard. Sometimes they can feel that they're being, um, uh, you know, then that they don't have a right to get involved when the when the young person uh, um, becomes eighteen, and that's really important where you have that balance between uh, a young person becoming an adult. But parents, by and large, in my experience, really do understand um, what makes the young person that they that lives with them, that they've cared for and supported over the years, what makes them tick. And I would say to any parent, if um, if you are supporting and working with your child and you are worried, 
then keep those lines of communication open with a college. Explain to the college that, yes, I do appreciate that, you know, my child is over 18, but please can I be involved in, in that? Because sometimes, you know, they may be worried that they're not making the best or the most informed decisions for themselves. Or to contact us and have a chat with us and we can guide them on how they can get that support as well and how we can support them with advocacy themselves. Thank you. So thank you so much for joining me. I just wanted to finish by asking um, if somebody can self-refer themselves or their child to Sendias and if so, what is the best way to get in touch with you? Well, the best way to get in touch with us is, um, well, they can contact me directly and um, my information is on our website. Uh, there is a referral button that they can press and they can fill in a few details. Um, so yes, on our website, www sendiasglos.org.uk um, So before moving on, I just wanted to say a big thank you to Isabel for taking the time to talk to us and state that you can find out more about Sendias, that is S-E-N-D-I-A-S-S -S, on sendiasglos.org.uk where you'll also find contact information if you wish to get in touch with them now next up we'll be speaking to abs and robin from young listeners hi my name is robin i am one of the future me youth reps i am also a volunteer young listener at health watch gloucestershire young listeners is a peer-to-peer -peer engagement project that explores the health and care issues that are important to young people we are particularly asking young people to let us know how they feel about four key areas. These are mental health, relationships, GP attitudes, and COVID-19 anxiety. We are gathering feedback from young people until the end of March. We will then be presenting our findings to Gloucestershire's health and care decision makers. If you are an individual or group of young people aged 16 to 24, I live in Gloucestershire, the project would love to hear from you. Any feedback given about health and social care experiences will be completely confidential and anonymous. Here's my fellow young listener, Abs, explaining to Beth more about the project. So today I'm joined by Abs with young listeners. Hi, Abs. Hi there. Um, so I was just wondering, first of all, could you explain a bit about what you do and who you are? Um, I'm, I'm Abs from Young Listeners at Half Wash Gloucestershire. Half Wash Gloucestershire is a small organisation that... Um, a small organisation that work with the health and care services alongside Gloucestershire. We are, as, we are the youth side of Half Wash Gloucestershire, so we try to engage with the young people about the health and care services, see what they want to know, see what we get from the results and see what results at the end of our report can go forward and see what improvements or positive or negative vibes we can get from the results at the end of, of the project. Cool. So would you say that kind of the Young Listeners Project is all about kind of engagement with young people and working out what can be improved and what changes need to be made? Yes. Yeah. Of, of course. So why do you think it's important for young people to kind of express their opinion about the health service in their area? Because there's a mixed, re there's a mixed reaction about the health and care services in Gloucestershire. Some, some services are good, good vibes and some, some services are bad, negative vibes. And to get your opinion reached, you have to push them. You have to push them. And I think by, push, by pushing, by speaking t to young people about the health and care services in Gloucestershire, you, you, you lot know what they want, where to go, and what's next steps for them. Yeah, I think that's really, really important that we kind of push to get our voices heard as young people. So it's really great that you're doing that. And so specific to health too, which is an area that a lot of people feel like they aren't really listened to. Yeah. So it's definitely a very important project. And I understand that you've kind of picked the topics mental health, GP attitudes and relationships. Why did you pick those topics to focus on? Um, because 
from being experienced, I think they're the most free typical topics about for young people in the health and care service. It is valuable. It is it is not respected enough about these free topics that we chose that some people some people are not valued, they're not respected about these things and it is time to get listen and to get your opinion across and see where you can go with that. So from my being my experience I haven't had the best in them free topics, but it is, it is time to s- try to seek, engage with young people and get their advice and opinions about the health and care services and try to improve and see if people need the help that they need from um, health and care services. Yeah, as another young person, I yeah. definitely agree that those are three really, really key areas that need a lot yeah. of work on. So, what have other young people had to say about their experience so far? It's been a mixed reaction. Uh, some people have had good, positive uh, opinions about it, and some negative opinions about it. And why is that? Because there's not a perfect service in the whole of the globe. Yeah. Some 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 sites you're gonna have great. Some of the time you're gonna have wrong. So why I think it is why we are getting that because there's not a, most of it. There's not a lot of support out there, and we want to try to get much help and see where people, if they want the help, to go and get that support and try to make the whatever problem they're having a better thing going in the future. Yeah, I think you know definitely. You know, I think there's key areas where people are kind of underrepresented. So it's really great that you're here trying to kind of lift up those voices. So what has been your favourite bit of the project? Honestly, I think the whole thing has been a great time because as being visually impaired, um, you're not respected, you're not acknowledged and you tr- you are not treated equally as a normal person. Mm. So with that, I just think that doing doing this project has made me open opportunities, doors, of adventures, and hopefully it will take me on to better and bigger things going in the f- future. And as being visually impaired, it, it's like making a difference and getting your voice heard. Oh, uh, you know, big thank you for talking with us today. And um, yeah, it was really great to have this conversation. Thank you, thank you. Get in touch with the project, head to our website to get our contact details. Our website is www.healthwatchgloucestershire.co.uk. There are also some quick online surveys on our website that anyone is welcome to complete. Thank you to Abs and Robin for speaking with us. It was great to meet you both and hear about your experiences and the Young Listeners Project really is great. So to reiterate, um, the surveys can be found under Young Listeners on healthwatchgloucestershire.co.uk. You can also find out more about the Young Listeners there and about how they're trying to impact decisions in healthcare. Now, I believe that the project either ends or is being renewed after months March so make sure you get in there and kind of interact because again you know it's a wonderful thing that they're doing there. Now speaking of impacting decisions Youth Parliament is currently encouraging young people between the ages of 11 to 18 in Gloucestershire to get out there and make your mark with the make your mark ballot of which are being held I believe currently or soon so with more information here is Martha. So I'm joined with Lisa Taylor today. Lisa works for the Gloucestershire Youth Support Team as an information coordinator and she's very kindly joined me here today to talk about the Make Your Mark ballot. Um, So to kick things off, Lisa, firstly, would you be able to explain to me what exactly is the Make Your Mark ballot? Of course. So, yeah, the Make Your Mark ballot is uh, a chance for all young people aged 11 to 18 across the four nations in the UK. Um, It gives them a chance to have a say on the biggest issues that face them in their opinion. So uh, it takes place annually. 
Um, it is supported by local authorities, schools, UK Parliament and the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport, which is never easy to say. Um, so, yes, yeah, so basically young people get to vote and, and they can do that in different ways. I think there are some schools in Gloucestershire, there's around seven schools in Gloucestershire that signed up this year to get the paper ballot. So they'll run a ballot in their school where young people will get to actually tick a paper version um, unless they've done online ballots, which is also a possibility. Um, but that even if your school hasn't registered or you don't go to school or all the, those other reasons that that might not be useful for you, there will be an option to vote online from the 1st of February and that goes throughout the month. So my understanding is that um, the actual what young people are voting on is that they're voting towards um, what they think the key issues that need addressing are. Um, that they'd want their member of youth parliament to kind of campaign to raise the profile of? Am I right in that understanding? That's pretty much the case. I mean, I think it's a brilliant opportunity for local authorities or anyone else who's interested in what young people's views are, because what, what we then have access to, I don't know how soon after the end of February it will be this year, but we'll get access to a spreadsheet which we can actually then drill down to see what young people in Gloucestershire have voted for, which might be quite different to, I mean, normally it isn't, but it could be quite different to mm. what the overall choices were across the country. Yeah. Because obviously, if you're living in Northern Ireland, for instance, the issues that you face as a young person might be very different for someone than someone who yeah. lives in Gloucestershire. So, yeah. so it could be quite different, but it allows local authorities or whoever else is interested, like the youth support team, to sort of see what it is that young people are concerned around in their particular area, as well as the national uh, issues and the devolved issues, for, as I said, for each of the four yes. nations. Yeah. So if somebody was to take part in the vote, I understand that they'd be given about 10 topics to vote on but could you give me an example of the sorts of topics that maybe have been nominated in the past absolutely so so for the last couple of years the um the results the campaigns that young people campaigned on were stop plastic pollution mm -hmm. um there was mental health and then also free university so what normally happens covid's put a sort of a bit of a, a a barrier up towards some of this but what normally happens is the MYPs meet for a, a, a conference like um, like MPs do uh, they meet for a conference annually they will bring motions to that conference they again that voted that they get voted on by the MYPs um, which is then brings those those that those topics down to 10 um, and then once young people like the wider population of young people across the four nations have voted. Um, what ordinarily would happen would be the MYPs would then go and sit in the Houses of Parliament and debate those issues further till they choose three. So, um, it. yeah, it, it's quite a lengthy process and it's quite yeah. different this year. And I'm not quite sure how it's going to work, but the, the ballot is going ahead in February. Brilliant. And it's a kind of democratic process and that, that those stages are quite a good way, I imagine, for young people to get some experience of what it feels like to vote when they're still under the age of the voting age. So that's a really excellent thing that, that people can take advantage of. Um, so you touched on this already, that some schools may have a paper ballot in school, um, and I assume that they would be made aware of that by their teaching staff if that was the case. If somebody listening yeah. is not aware of that, you mentioned they could vote online. Could you explain a bit more about how you do that? You can go to makeyourmark.youthimpact.app forward slash register forward slash me, M-E. And then it takes you through um, some questions about you, your age, your home postcode. So going back to that, then we can sort of drill down and see what different people in different areas have voted for. Brilliant. Um, so just thinking about... Um, yeah, the process of voting in general then. Um, I wondered what kind of the benefits of voting you think that young people should be aware of and, and, and why you, what your message to them would be of why they should consider taking part in the Make Your Mark ballot. 
I think, I mean, you said yourself, Martha, it's, it's an opportunity to have a little bit of experience of the democratic process. Um, obviously, under 18s can't vote um, for their MPs and they can't take part in, um, you know, other voting systems that might be run by the government. So there's that opportunity. But I think it's just a, an opportunity to feel like you've been part of something and that you've had a say in something. And, you know, we've talked about before, the NYPs then choose that as their national campaign and they'll have opportunities to learn about that topic. Um, they'll have um, online and in-person sessions throughout this next year um where they get to really drill down into what a campaign might look like and they'll hear from experts who may be working in the field depending on what the topics are um i've sort of mentioned what the topics were in the last year or two uh, there's also been knife crime i know from we held a candidates workshop for this next cohort of myps um and there was quite a lot of young people there that are concerned about, um, I suppose, envir environmental issues more wider, but specifically they were talking about litter in their local areas, which I, I just something I've not heard before from young people necessarily, not, not as a huge group. I think we had 20 odd young people and quite a lot of them had mentioned that. So it's just an opportunity for them to be able to um, feel like their voice matters, I guess, um, and, and to feel like they can inform a process that in, will, will make a difference to other young people. I think often young people are asked their opinion and it can sometimes feel like nothing happens with it. So to know that there's a, a plan for after the ballot closes, excellent to hear that there's a, a destination for people's votes and, and that it will have an effect. So that's yeah, great. Fabulous. Yeah, I think also just to add to that as well, those those NYPs that do get chosen ultimately in March will hopefully will go back into their schools and their communities um, and talk to other young people about what they can do to to support that campaign that was elected through the Make Your Mark. So it could be right into your MP. And, and so they learn, you know, they learn other democratic uh, processes and, and ways to be politically active I guess. Yeah that's another fantastic opportunity for people to look into um, obviously you said the, the nominations have closed but in the future um, where would people look to find out more about the youth parliament and getting involved? I guess I mean again they can look on the British Youth Council website because that obviously has oversight across the country um, but we we are members of, of the sort of UKYP process then so you can always sort of get in touch with us there but obviously um, through the youth support team to keep an eye on our social media and uh, our website which is youthsupportteam.co.uk um, and you can find out more sort of there as as things come up and, and it's sort of in our news then if you like yeah. but yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Lisa. And I think it's great to signpost to your website anyway. And uh, thank you so much for meeting with me. It's been lovely to talk to you.